Good morning YouTube, I have some more CNC updates for you. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, this is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience. And I know there's a lot of you that are new to my channel, so I first of all wanted to say welcome, and thank you for subscribing and watching my videos, and I know that you're really interested in all the CNC stuff, but I wanted to show you what my channel is normally all about, and hopefully that will make you want to stay and watch some of my other videos as well. What we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna drive down to San Antonio, and the reason is because one of the companies that I'm a part owner of is called Gated Six, and we do manual conversions on Ferraris. Well, and in some other cars eventually. But right now, we've got a bunch of parts that we're actually making to convert Ferrari F430s and 360s and 599s into manual transmission cars. So it's pretty cool stuff. So we just got in a bunch of parts from our manufacturers. So. I'm gonna go down there, check them out, and we're probably gonna start putting some of them in kits because eventually we're gonna start shipping these kits out. And it's really cool stuff, so you're gonna wanna check this out. All right, we are at European Auto Group, and uh, they've got a lot of cars that they're converting right now, but I wanted to show you this because this is our first wholly manufactured interior shift box. So this is the box that actually goes in a Ferrari F430 or 360, and as you can see, this is where the gating will be, Oh, it's so smooth. And let me tell you, picking it up, it's so much lighter than the factory piece. So we actually had this made and it was CNC machined versus the factory pieces are cast. So the cast pieces arguably aren't as good. This is a higher grade materials and it's more precise because of the machining. This thing right here is way smoother than the factory cars. That is that feels so good. All right, so I'm over on the warehouse side of Gated 6 and I wanted to show you some of the parts because we're pretty close to having the 430 kits ready to go, like I said. So we've already sold quite a few of the kits that are gonna be coming in. So we think we're gonna have four kits available to sell in April. So if you were looking to get a Gated 6 conversion done on an F430 or a 360, we're gonna have four more spots available. So go get in touch with European Auto Group or you can get in touch with me at gated6.com and I'll get you in touch with European Auto Group. But basically, if you wanted to get that done, you got a chance to do it really quickly. So let me show you some of these parts. They're just Beautiful. These are some of the components of our shift box. You can see these are nice, high quality CNC machined. And then down here, you guys will like this. These are all clutch pedals. Yeah, we have 50, 50 clutch pedals that are gonna be going in these kits. Uh, we also have, of course, some of the shift boxes back there and some of the, uh, the hosing for the hydraulic lines. And then these are more components of the shift boxes right here. So these shift boxes, obviously, are not assembled, they will be later. And then we have shift knobs back there. But the shift knobs aren't done, we haven't put the etching on them and we haven't put the final components on them. But we did finally get our test finish done. So these are the gates. You can see here is an unfinished gate. You can see the, the machining marks and here is one of the polished up gates. And just look at that, it looks so good. That looks better than the factory, let me tell you. I've seen them. That looks better. That doesn't obviously because, well, it needs to become that. But man, look at, <laughs> this is uh, just a touch of all the parts. We still have quite a few more parts that are, are incorporated in the kit, but I just wanna show you because we just got all of these in just the other day. And of course, we just got the rest of those in. And like I said, we have a few more parts coming our way. I also wanted to show you this. So this is actually one of the parts that from the factory is made out of plastic and we used glass infused nylon. So this is a much, much more durable material. It should never wear out versus the plastic parts can wear out. So there is actually a piece that slides right here and obviously it pivots on this particular point right here. So that had the potential of creating wear and then eventually getting a little bit loose in the factory cars. Also, I sh thought I should show you this is kind of cool. Here is one of our prototypes that we 3D printed in plastic. So you can see this piece right here is actually this. And then of course, all these other components are parts that are over here. So uh, probably hard to recognize it, but those pieces plus those square pieces all come together and form this right here, which is our inside shift box. So right up here is where you're gonna have the stick coming through. These, this will be all the shift mechanisms that are coming out down in the bottom. So real quick, uh, just so you know, 
Matt, the guy with the 360, if you happen to see his channel. Hey everybody, as you can see, I got my car back. I'm over the moon excited. However, that's still only about 40% of my battle here. He got his car back and he did a video on it. Obviously I did a quick little blurb about that of him giving a thanks to everyone who helped him. So there's a link for that video in the description below. Also, Shane actually did a video. I uh, personally started to build a shadow campaign to uh, expose CNC Motors as it pertained to what was going on with me. And I think he's planning on doing a couple of videos to discuss how he actually got his car back. So that's gonna be on his channel. Again, link is in the description below. Is gonna be fairly fascinating, I suspect. So go check that out. Eventually. Well, good morning, YouTube. It's actually been a few days since the last time I filmed. And part of that was I just needed a few days to decompress. I've been working so hard on all of this CNC stuff that uh, the other day I was on a conference call and I just started falling asleep during the call. And then I realized, I needed to take a break. <laughs> so um, if you didn't know, I've basically been working on this every single day since I kind of got involved from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. Obviously that's a, uh, an unsustainable pace and uh, I was getting pressure from, from Meg to slow down and I should have listened to her because I just kind of hit a wall and so I took a day and a half to just kind of do nothing. I got out and drove my car and Anyway, I wanted to give some updates because the situation kind of keeps evolving and uh, give you where we're at as of this moment. So it's Sunday, April 11th, uh, Sunday morning, April 11th. And as of this moment, I have, I think, 40 entries on my form, although there's a few that still have not been verified as true. So I don't know, like people could be filling it out falsely. I, who knows? Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Also. Uh, as of this moment, the unverified dollar amount by those entries is about $7 million. A lot of that comes from one particular car that went missing um, or like some weird situation on that. I'm not gonna speculate on that one because I haven't talked to that person and it's so big that I need to like, verify that. But uh, on the plus side, as of this moment, I believe the people that I've talked to, we've recovered seven cars now, which is, outstanding. Uh, I honestly didn't think we were going to find any of them. And so actually I want to take a minute and give you a few stories of people who didn't want to actually go on camera, but said I could kind of use their story so long as I don't tell any personal details. So I'm not going to tell you what type of car, the dollar amounts, their names, any of that sort of stuff, but I thought I'd give you their stories because I think it's relevant to the situation and gives you some insights as, as to how these people are getting their cars back. All right. So the first person I want to tell you about, uh, I kind of want to tell their story because we now have it end to end. So this person was the one who initially contacted me right after my first video went out and said, hey, my car was dropped off on that Thursday. They supposedly sold on Friday, but he called on Saturday and that's when they told him it was sold. They never told him it was sold. And so then he went to see it Sunday and it was gone. So Monday morning is when he contacted me. This was what a, a week, two weeks ago now. He was very freaked out. And I felt that story particularly hit me hard because uh, that's when I realized if I had acted harder and sooner and got the word out more, he might not have been in the situation. And so that's when I really uh, felt like I had to do more to help prevent people from getting involved in the situation. Because that was the thing is like, if you're already in, you're already in, there's nothing we can do except try and help you you know, get your car back or whatever. But if there was people who are literally still bringing their cars there, and I think that was, that really bothered me. So anyway, uh, the reason I wanted to talk about his story is because he got his car back. So how did he get his car back? And it's crazy. So uh, as the story goes, on Wednesday of that week, he located his car. And just to be sure, he did all the work. So people have been coming to me saying, can you, meaning me, can I help them find their car? And the reality is I, I probably can't. You have to do most of the work. What I can do is lend you my platform to tell your story and I can help you share information with other people in the story by getting you in touch with them. I can't like go dig up the car information, all that stuff. I simply don't have the time. There's 40 plus people and it, you know, each person would take probably a couple days worth of work. So it's just simply mathematically impossible for me to help everyone. So I apologize that I can't. Anyway, he finds his car and lets me know, hey, I found the car, it's at a dealership. And I said, okay, you should probably go to the dealership and uh, talk to them and really see what's up. And because he still had the title, right? So he does, he uh, goes to the dealership 
And so he uh, pretends to be interested in the car and not tell them that it's his car just to learn more. And then all of a sudden he actually got a phone call and it rang on his Bluetooth on the car. And the salesperson was like, how did you do that? And he's like, well, actually this is my car. I have the title for it. And uh, you guys got it from CNC Motors and uh, I haven't been paid for it. And so they're like, oh crap. So he talks to the owner of the dealership and they discuss the situation. And basically, here's where the laws get a little bit gray. What I'm gonna say is all just my opinion. I don't know the laws exactly. So if you're in this situation, you need to consult an attorney to make sure you know what you're doing and don't get in trouble. So I'm not advocating any of this, okay? Just to be clear. Basically, he said, here's the deal, that's my car and I'm gonna take it. And they said, well, okay, uh, you know, we need to discuss this, blah, blah, blah. And so the dealer said, well, let me try and get the situation squared up with Clay first. And so I don't know exactly what happened, but after quite a few days, nothing had been resolved. No one had gotten any money from Clay. And so at that particular point in time, I believe the individual went to the dealership. I think he said maybe he brought the police with him, but he notified the police, I'm pretty sure, and basically took his car and got his car back. That's great. And I believe in that particular case, everything he did is probably what would I would consider like the best recommendation uh, under the circumstances. So, um, but again, this is my opinion. I'm not giving you any advice. You gotta do what you need to do based on what you can do legally and what your attorney advises you. So one of the reasons why we haven't been telling too many more stories is because some of these people located their cars but don't have it in their possession yet. And so they're working on trying to get the cars and we didn't want to give any sort of tips that their car might be found and that they're trying to get it. So uh, it's kind of crazy because the more stories we're hearing, the more we're realizing that this is kind of multiple layers deep. So one of the one of the details about that last story that I um, just remembered is when this individual talked to the owner of the dealership, the owner admitted that Clay at CNC Motors owed them a substantial amount of money, and that's why they got that car. They got that car to help pay down some debt that this dealership was owed. I'm thinking this is just speculation that some of these cars are coming out on consignment and then CNC Motors is just simply selling them but not actually receiving any payments. They're just simply paying down existing debts with these cars. And if that's true, that's a problem for the people receiving the cars because they may never get paid. So now the burden falls from the seller onto the buyer because they probably don't have legal authority for this car. They don't have the title. They don't have a bill of sale in some of these cases, so it's kind of weird. Uh, we do have other people who have found their cars and found that the titles were not signed. That means that those transactions are probably void. I don't, again, I don't know the legalities of it. Uh, it gets really complicated. The question is, how do you get possession of your car back? Most people don't wanna just hand over a car that they paid for. I mean, some of these people actually paid for these cars and now they're finding out that it's not their car, it's just, it just, oh my God, it's just really crazy, uh, really crazy stuff. So there's another story which is really fascinating, but uh, I'm waiting for that person to give me the green light on to tell the story. I hope they do. But at the same time, we're kind of maybe letting the situation cool down a bit because it's, it's intense. It's intense. So I'm hoping that story uh, gets the go. So like I said, at this point, I think there's seven people out of, out of that list that have recovered their cars. Uh, we are still trying to help quite a few of them. Beyond that seven, I believe there's four or five more cars that have been located, but uh, are not back in the owner's possession. It also gets tricky for the owners that don't have the title. So that gets way more complicated. In those particular cases, they may have to file for a duplicate title or a lost title or whatever it's called and get that first and show that they have ownership in which is, sometimes possible because the car may not be registered or it might not be able to be registered. So a lot of these people have called the DMV and this is where uh, it's so important that if you are in a situation like this, you do call the DMV because the DMV was able to put basically like a lock on the VIN and say, no one can register this car. If someone tries to, it flags the system and basically says, 
you can't register this car, uh, you know, and then from there they can work towards clearing up the situation. So that is part of the reason why I've been trying to collect all of these incident report numbers or whatever it's called, the DMV report number. If you were affected by the situation, go to ngfc.me slash cnc and fill out the form and please have an incident report number from the DMV ready and put, put that information in there. Without that number, I probably won't help you, not because I don't want to, but because uh, there's not much I can do, right? I think that's like your best option is to start there. I, as I've said, I have an email group that we've been adding people to and these people are now collaborating to help each other and that has become extremely, extremely powerful. I'm kind of more hands off now because I don't have the time to sit there and be like the moderator of this group. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of snowballed bigger than me. I've been trying to pitch the story to some media outlets it seems to kind of fall on deaf ears. No one really wants to pick it up. I don't know why. I have one particular media group that seems to be interested in the story and hopefully is working towards it, but I've, it's been, I don't know, it's been strange. Also, uh, a bunch of people have asked, like, shouldn't Doug DeMiro be saying something because Doug DeMiro did all these review of cars from CNC. And honestly, I don't see that there's any reason for him to to acknowledge the situation i think it would be good if he just kind of said hey you know it's a terrible situation whatever just as a warning to people he almost certainly knew nothing about this in my opinion so i don't see that it's anything to do with him really like it's not his fault there's nothing he could have done so like people pointing fingers at him are kind of like that's pointless. It doesn't help, right? I guess the last bit of news I wanted to share that is uh, directly related to this is uh, a lot of people, a lot of you have said, Dan, you should open a dealership. Dan, you should do something to find a way to make these sorts of things uh, more difficult, if not impossible to happen. Serendipity kind of came to play. One of my longtime viewers had already been working on building an auction website for cars that was gonna be different and better and safer. And he reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to get involved? And I'm very, very proud to say that as of this week, I am now a part owner in that company and we are going to try and build a better auction system with a lot of safety measures and things to make it so that these transactions are much more transparent, uh, less prone to fraud and just better. Just there's no reason why we can't have a better way of doing these transactions, especially with these high dollar cars. Now, obviously when you start adding up the extra costs, it might not make sense when you're doing it on a $10,000 car, but when you're doing it on a $150,000 car, adding in a little extra money to make sure that the title gets transferred correctly, that the correct people get the money, that PPIs are done, all that sort of stuff really becomes important and worth every cent. That's what we're doing. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you the name of the company yet or the name of the website because uh, we're gonna do a big launch and obviously talk about it a lot over the next month or so. So the goal is to probably launch sometime in May. We're, again, this is all very early on. The good news is they were already working on the website and the system before I even got involved. So it's much further along than it would be if I was starting from scratch and it was kind of perfect because this was always part of my longer term goals. So I always kind of was moving towards the ability to have an online auction system associated with me and that I would be able to promote and stuff because I've had people say like, I want to sell a car, where should I sell it? And I, at this point I had to send them somewhere else. So now I'll be able to send them to my system because I'll have much more access to it. I'll be able to feel much more comfortable pointing people in that direction. So anyway, that's coming very soon. So thank you to all of you that said I should do this because it was just perfect timing. Seriously, it was like, wow, I, I couldn't have planned that better if I had tried, there's no way. So uh, again, super excited to be a part of that. That will be coming out very soon. You guys are gonna love it. It's gonna be awesome. So um, yeah, stay tuned for all of that. And again, I know a lot of you have been saying, Dan, get back to car stuff, gang, car stuff, car stuff. Don't worry, don't worry. I will be doing car stuff. I just needed to kind of see this CNC stuff through. I felt like I owed it to the people who have asked for my help. So I'm trying to do what I can on that. Also, it's it's actually been kind of interesting, exciting for me. So I've really enjoyed it. Now, 
I'm not trying to intentionally not do car stuff. I just also have been kind of in a holding pattern because the parts for the 599 are in. So we're gonna be doing that very soon. We will be doing the 599, getting it running, and then I'm gonna be driving the crap out of it and then selling it on my new system. All of that's gonna happen in the next month or so. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that. Uh, honestly, the 458 just hasn't needed any work. It's just kind of working. It doesn't need an oil change, doesn't need anything. We do wanna go back and revisit Tim. Tim's car is gonna get some love. So we think we have a solution for that. So we'll update you on that as that happens. And obviously then there's gonna be some other stuff I still need to review. Meg's car and so does Meg. So all of that will be coming soon. So you should subscribe to the channel if you wanna see all that stuff. Of course, we'll keep you updated with more CNC stuff as it happens. So please subscribe, hit the thumbs up, share this video. That does help out my channel and also helps bring awareness so that people don't get in these terrible situations. So I appreciate that. I genuinely do. So thank you for doing that. Again, if you're a victim, go to ngsc.me slash CNC. And if you happen to need any car parts or services or anything like that for a supercar, I can help you out with that. Go visit my website, normalguysupercar.com. And finally, if you're interested in converting an F1 transmission Ferrari into a manual, we're working on that at gated6.com. So that's kind of promoting all my stuff, so I thank you for your time. We will be doing lots of car stuff. It's gonna be sweet.